Avengers Infinity War actually managed to live up to a decade of hype. Flying in the face of cynical expectations, the movie told an engaging story while balancing screen time over a dozen beloved characters. It even kept your attention despite being almost long enough to live up to the Infinity part of its name. But just because you love something doesn't mean you can't poke holes in it. Here are the parts of Avengers Infinity War that left us scratching our heads. Not exactly cutting edge. Vision is probably the most advanced machine on the planet, capable of everything from controlling his body at a molecular level to getting all Hugh Grant charming when he's talking to Wanda. What if I missed that train? What if I missed all the trains? What if this time I didn't go back? Is there anything he can't do? Connect to Wi-Fi, for one. In the moments leading up to his first fight with Proxima Midnight, Vision has only just heard about the latest attack on New York by noticing it on a TV. Apparently, even super-advanced synthesoids still need to get news via basic cable. One of the Avengers really needs to update his software. We, we had to attach each neuron non-sequentially. Non Why didn't you just reprogram the synapses to work collectively? Stay by Frosty. When it was first introduced, the Bifrost Bridge was the only way of getting from Asgard to Earth. Then it exploded at the end of Thor. So we found out in Avengers that you can still summon the bridge, but it's really, really hard. In Infinity War, we finally get to see Heimdall doing that, and it's a gut-wrenching process. Why, he has to go so far as to ask the All-Father's permission. Let the dark magic flow through me one last Yeah, apparently Heimdall just has to ask permission, and some sort of ancient magic lets him control technology that previously took a big bronze room full of spinny things to harness. And if Thor's new hammer, Stormbreaker, is actually summoning the Bifrost, why didn't the Asgardians put in an order for a couple of magic axes a long time ago? It seems like that'd come in handy. Cannonbreaker no two ways about it, Infinity War was an incredible culmination of a decade of storytelling. It just seemed overly eager to ignore some of those stories. In Thor Ragnarok, everyone's favorite Norse god realizes that his enchanted accoutrements were never where his power came from. He didn't need a magic hammer, the magic was in him all along. Tell me, brother, what were you the god of again? Now, with Infinity War coming directly after the events of Ragnarok, Thor suddenly needs a new magic hammer. He needs it so much, in fact, that he spends 90% of his screen time trying to get a new magic hammer. Now, maybe Thor just needed Stormbreaker for the specific task of killing Thanos. Still, it just seems like it detracts from the moral of the last movie if it turns out you actually do need a magic tool to accomplish difficult tasks. I'm getting a new hammer, don't forget. Well, it better be some hammer. Sling Ring, do your thing. If there's one thing Infinity War makes absolutely clear, it's that the children of Thanos are pretty threatening. We see them lay the smackdown on almost all our favorite heroes, wrecking a good chunk of Scotland in a fight with Vision, and keeping a significantly souped-up Iron Man on his toes. Where'd that come from? It's nanotech. You like it? A little something. For a decent chunk of the movie, the only thing we see that seems to slow these guys down is when Wong makes creative use of the sling ring. So, here's a question. Why aren't we using that sling ring more often? It seems like Wong and Strange could fix just about any problem by teleporting it away. At the very least, they could have teleported Thanos' Infinity Gauntlet away, forearm and all. That seems like an easier solution than the world's most tense game of tug-of-war. Wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey. As storytelling maneuvers go, time travel has got to be one of the hardest landings to stick, since the rules seem to shift based on the needs of the story. Understandably, that makes the Time Stone kind of a pain from an audience perspective. Sure, we know it controls time, and that's rad, but it also makes it tough to nail down exactly what it does. In Doctor Strange, the Time Stone warps time just… everywhere. Strange turns back time all over the city when he uses it, making it appear to be more of a time hammer than a time scalpel. 
Flash forward to Infinity War, and Thanos uses it to turn back time, but only for Vision and the Mind Stone. He's had the thing for 15 minutes, and he already figured out how to use it as a very specific undo button. 